No, ladies and gentlemen, this is not clickbait. You are indeed being misled, even lied to about DLSS, FSR and XSS. And this is a topic I've been talking about in kind of segments in other videos for the last few years, really. But I still see comments time and time again saying that DLSS is the worst thing since unsliced bread. FSR is crap, never use it. And XSS, what even is that? So what I want to do in this video is just basically explain what DLSS is, what the difference between super resolution and frame generation is and also talk a little bit about latency, image quality and ultimately when and where these technologies are worth using because there's a lot of confusion and for some people this is going to mean that your game is going to feel a little bit more laggy than it needs to and for others is going to mean that you're going to miss out on potentially the exact same image quality or at least perceivable image quality but you'd be running at a significantly lower frame rate when all you need to do is flicker setting and you'd get a much better gaming experience overall so let me explain absolutely everything you need to know about DLSS, FSR and XSS right after a short word from this video's sponsor. Intel Gamer Days is back for 2025, and it's a great time to upgrade your battle station. There are huge savings to be had on devices powered by Intel, with crazy high frame rates delivered by the second generation of Intel Core Ultra Mobile CPUs, with greater power efficiency for longer battery life and quieter operation. If you're more team desktop, then Intel is also discounting its Core Ultra lineup here too, letting you game on up to 24 cores for less. Intel has also partnered with EA on the upcoming Battlefield 6, and those buying a qualifying Intel laptop or CPU can get a copy of the game for free when it launches later this year. Check out the Intel Gamer Days deals for yourself by clicking the link down below. So yes, definitely a lot to discuss. And I want to start with the reason that's actually prompted this video, because it's off the cuff, it's unscripted. This could go anywhere, purely because, as I say, I see comments time and time again from people, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but just not really understanding what these technologies are. And I think there's quite a few reasons for this. So let's start with the fact that DLSS, FSR, and XSS are upscaling technologies at their core. You've got the new DLSS 4 technology from NVIDIA that's actually bundled in frame generation that's something completely different and it annoys me that they do this and we'll explain that a little bit later but for what essentially you need to know is that upscaling technologies are at their core very simple they take a game so let's say you have a 4k screen it requires a lot of horsepower to actually drive the game at that resolution you probably noticed if you go from 1080p 1440 to 4k the frame rate and thus the way that the game feels uh, drops significantly as you actually increase the resolution and it gets harder for the game to run. And this essentially opens the door up for upscaling technologies to have your output resolution, which for ease, let's say is 4K, uh, you can essentially pump in less pixels and then use an algorithm to sharpen everything up, kind of fill in the blanks, and then what you see on screen is gonna be higher quality. And pretty much all screens do this. I mean, this is nothing new. This has been something we saw from like plasma and like early LCD TVs, right? Upscaling. Uh, standard definition to HD. But this is a lot more intelligent because it does it with AI in a lot of cases. So rather than literally just turning like one pixel into four, it can intelligently go right. So we've got this green pixel here. We're next to a fence, which is white. So this one probably should be white and this one probably should be green. And especially when we talk about higher resolutions, uh, the image quality can actually be really, really good. Now, this was actually, in my opinion, fairly accurate even when DLSS launched, but it always had a severe caveat, which was that it only really worked well at high resolution, so mainly 4K. Uh, but fast forward to 2025 and beyond, depending on when you're watching this, it's got so much better, especially with DLSS 4 that uses these new AI transformers. So it can kind of intelligently actually work out what's on screen, it has motion vectors. So if we're moving this way, it knows to, rather than go maybe to the next pixel, it needs to take like five pixels over. It's really, really clever. And actually the image quality you're gonna get, even at lower resolutions, getting on for 1080p, is going to be significantly better than it was. But I want to be very clear that early FSR, early DLSS and XESS, at 1080p, the input resolution that you're putting in it wasn't high enough so that the output you got tend to look a little bit blurry. And the problem then becomes you've got people like me playing at 1440 or 4K, talking about the technology and showing it off and saying, hey, look, DLSS actually works really well. I can't notice that much of a difference. And there'd be plenty of people playing on a 1080p monitor. They'll turn on DLSS and they go, well, this doesn't look very good. This is worse. I've got a higher frame rate, but the image looks blurry. This is rubbish. What are those people on about? And this is what's, as I say, improved a lot over the last few years as the technology has got better. In a nutshell, it's made it more close to what it should be. And hopefully this is the stage actually that editor Carl can quite helpfully overlay 
uh, some footage here for you of 4K and we'll start with native and then obviously we'll show you the differences between all the different presets because of course you've got the performance preset which is going to be a lot faster in terms of frame rate uh, but has a lower input resolution and thus means that the image isn't going to look quite so good all the way up to the quality preset uh, that obviously is kind of the opposite. You're closely matching the input resolution, so your frame rate's going to be less, but the output should be better. And the main way that these things have improved over time, as I say, is just that the output resolution is getting closer to native. Sometimes you see NVIDIA will give examples and say it's actually better than native, which technically could be true. And you might be wondering, well, that makes no sense how. That's because native with anti-aliasing sometimes can get some weird blurriness or artifacting from the anti-aliasing. Whereas by using DLSS, which is obviously a different algorithm, it might be better at that specific sharpness for that particular thing. But generally speaking, uh, I would say that obviously native is always going to look uh, its best, but I can't think of a time really in the last five, six years that I've ever played a game at native 4K without turning on DLSS. Maybe in like some really old game that didn't have the technology, but it's always worth using. That's DLSS, and obviously this is only going to work on NVIDIA graphics cards, and it's only going to work on games that support DLSS, and the better versions tend to be in the newer games essentially, so while some games might support DLSS, there might be version 1, uh, whereas the newer ones might be version 4 and obviously everything in between. It's getting better and I highly advise everyone watching this that has an NVIDIA graphics card, even at 1080p, tries to use DLSS super resolution because in my experience it works really well, but do be aware that it works better at higher resolutions even today, just by the nature of what it is. Where things get a little bit blurry, good joke there, is when we talk about the other two, which is XESS and FSR. So FSR is a AMD, it's open source, I think, or at least open-ish source, or maybe just free to use. That's more of a algorithm, or traditionally, it's more than an algorithm that will work on any graphics card, so it didn't actually need AI to function. It was kind of just like a filter in a way, really, that would aim to do the same thing as DLSS, but because it wasn't quite as intelligent, you'd find that it wouldn't work quite as well. It'd work better than like some third-party solutions that will do like the whole screen so you might find you get some weird upscaling artifacts on like menus or maybe like health bars and things with fsr it was meant to kind of take just the game uh, rather than like everything that's overlaid on top of it but traditionally this was no way near as good and it made reviewing a lot of these cards and things quite difficult because you might find that the nvidia graphics card might not be quite so fast as an amd one but if the dlss looked better than the amd's output at the equivalent fsr it quite literally made it quite muddy and quite difficult to review and talk about but FSR it works quite well and it's always worth experimenting with but especially at 1080p I found that a lot of the time the artifacts that you got from that weren't fantastic so I was always using it at the absolute highest quality settings and it was pretty much okay fine somewhere to good maybe at 4k but then 1440p and especially at 1080p it was kind of like, mm, do I really want to turn this on? And I think for a lot of people, this is probably where uh, FSR and DLSS get mixed in together, that DLSS is rubbish, you should never use it because people have been using FSR at 1080p and it maybe doesn't look very good, but don't put everything in together. They're actually kind of different technologies, as I say, because DLSS uses AI and FSR does not, except for the latest generation of AMD graphics cards that are now releasing, so the 9070 XT, 9070, 9060 XT, uh, these actually support FSR 4. And the reason I've been a very happy boy over the last uh, few months or so, really, is because they have caught up, really. I mean, I think DLSS 4 is still slightly better, but honestly, if you play something like Horizon, we have this lovely demo where we look at Aloy's hair. Bear in mind, we've zoomed this in quite a lot. I was amazed at how much better this looks. And the main reason for this is because it essentially uses AI. It uses the hardware that's on these new AMD GPUs in the same way that DLSS did, and thus you're getting a more DLSS-like result. It's really, really smart, really clever, and it's way better than the FSR of old. The downside with FSR, though, is that there's not that many FSR 4 supported titles. I mean, a lot of new ones, yes, but certainly going back uh, there's some like weird third-party walk-arounds or walk-arounds, work-arounds that can kind of like move files around that kind of tricks the system into using FSR 4. But this is not exactly a complete solution and a lot of people wouldn't want to like mess around with this sort of thing. Anyway, a lot of people would, but not everyone would. So FSR 4, you may as well think of this as what DLSS used to be, which is great, fantastic, definitely worth using. Going to work better at higher resolutions, but also some lower resolutions. Old FSR, 
not really that good. But of course, don't forget that there are now three players in the GPU game as well. We also have Intel and they have their art cards. They also have Again, not entirely sure whether it's completely open source or just kind of free to use or free to implement, but you have XCSS. And this was actually, interestingly, always a bit better than FSR. It really was like the middle ground. The prime game that I use that has XCSS uh, would be Fortnite, and I always found it worked quite well, worked better than FSR. Same kind of principle that you can pretty much use it on like most hardware, really. But the downside was that it wasn't quite as good as DLSS because it didn't have the same kind of like AI implementation by kind of using the chip on the GPU. But for whatever reason, this has always seemed to work better, as I say, uh, than FSR. So if you have a game and it doesn't matter what vendor you have, because unlike NVIDIA, you don't need an NVIDIA graphics card to use the Intel tech. And other than FSR 4, you don't need an AMD graphics card to use the general FSR tech. These things were always just worth experimenting with. And if you're aiming, let's say, for 30 frames a second, you're getting 25, you're getting some weird inconsistency. Well, you're better off turning on these upscaling technologies anyway, because you might have a game that doesn't look quite so good. But if it's suddenly a playable frame rate, obviously that's fantastic. But if you're playing multiplayer and obviously want the highest frame rate possible, again, very good use of these technologies. They're always going to work better at high resolutions. So if you're running at a 1080p monitor, your results definitely will vary. Now, that is upscaling in a nutshell. And the main thing as well that I want to get across is that because it improves your frame rate, it enables your graphics card to work, well not faster, but work more efficiently essentially and pump out more frames per second properly, it actually reduces the latency they're going to get in game. This is the main comment that I see and it annoys me. People say DLSS, it increases your latency. No, this is not true. DLSS super resolution decreases the latency, it makes it more responsive because your frame rate is increasing it is not generating more frames it's producing more frames it's rendering more frames and this makes your game feel more responsive i use nvidia frame view to monitor the latency in supported games uh, you can get it if you've got it baked into the nvidia driver or you can just download it doesn't matter what gpu vendor you have frame view is a very very useful tool for seeing latency or if you have an nvidia card just press alt and r and this should show at the top right corner of your screen under render latency essentially so those comments have very much become a little bit of a pet peeve for me but there is some truth in there and this is why I say there's often a lot of confusion about this it's because when it comes to latency the other part of DLSS 4 the frame generation now this does increase latency and this is why I don't like that it's kind of in their DLSS suite because DLSS stands for deep learning super sampling well where does frame generation come into that they just want to make it easier and have a single name and single technology and have a single line on their graphs that makes everything look fantastic but the real problem and the real kind of disdain or dislike shall we say towards some of uh, Nvidia's marketing recently has been around frame generation because DLSS whilst the image doesn't necessarily look the same as native though especially in the recent technologies you know they're getting so close is genuinely impressive and most people that use it really like it and really enjoy it and it makes your game feel better. Frame generation is a bit of a weird one because it's for specific people in specific instances and I will say whilst there's definitely times I have used it and when I'm sort of sitting at a desk mouse and keyboard I find that in certain games it's definitely something that I will use. Most of my gaming these days tends to either be multiplayer games at the desktop or actually controller games on my TV and for whatever reason I find that in all of those games I just prefer to turn frame generation off which might be a little bit confusing because you might think well your frame rate's gone down why would you want to play at a lower frame rate but it's all about latency what happens with frame generation is that you render your frame you can also use this with super resolution as well in tandem but you render your frame and then instead of rendering another frame in between this little gap you have frame generation so it uses ai to look at the last frame and then kind of project a new frame if you like in the middle and essentially what this does is it just smooths out the way it looks on your display and assuming there were no artifacts and no like latency penalty this would be really good because a lot of people are buying high resolution and high refresh rate monitors like 240 hertz and if you're running a game at 100 and you can fill in the blanks you can use your full display to its full capability that's fantastic that's going to be great it would be worth doing but the problem is that a frame from frame generation is just no way near the same as what you're gonna get just by either using DLSS super resolution or just like rendering it normally essentially because it introduces some weird artifacts. I'll see if I can get Carl to kind of fake this uh, when I move my arm. It kind of like puts this like weird kind of waviness over frames in certain instances, especially when you're using it in tandem 
with ray tracing and in particular path tracing, which is probably when you'd want to use the technology. And uh, the most recent 50 series of NVIDIA GPUs has multi-frame generation that kind of stacks this. And I don't want to say makes it even worse, but makes the artifacts, makes the problems even more pronounced because you've got more frames in there, right? So rather than going rendered frame, AI render, you can actually go all the way up to 4X, which is rendered frame, AI, AI, AI render. And yeah, I, I can't really personally see a time that I would ever want to use uh, the maximum 4X because it just introduces a little bit too much waviness for me. The latency penalty as well is probably the killer, I think, for most people. I can kind of deal with a couple of weird artifacts because I will say as well, if you slow the image down and you kind of make everything look a little bit more pronounced, then you're kind of giving it an unfair disadvantage really because you wouldn't necessarily see that in real life. Some games you will, uh, but some things are subtle when you're looking at the game and obviously you can see the smoothness but not the weird artifacts and things. But you can always feel the latency penalty, which is just a big shame. So my example would be even an RTX 5090, I'm playing Indiana Jones at the moment downstairs on the television and I can turn on like all of the settings, all of the path tracing, I can turn on frame generation and DLSS and even at 4K I can get all of the settings turned up with a very high frame rate. Great, fantastic. But the way the game feels is always worse with frame generation enabled than disabled. And as long as I'm getting around about 70 or 80 frames a second anyway, that's enough for me. I don't think I necessarily need any more. I appreciate the extra smoothness, it's 120 FPS TV, but the advantage that you get from being able to kind of see a little bit more smoothness on screen, I think is negated by the fact that the actual experience with the controller is worse because you feel less connected to the game. Now, my magic number for this is always 55 milliseconds, especially if you're using a mouse and keyboard because you're not, you've not got so much input lag from like the controller in the first place, so it's gonna be less pronounced. 55 milliseconds, this is when I can't really notice much of a difference between frame gen on and off. And this is when I think the technology is gonna be worth using, assuming you've not got any artifacts and things. But as I say, just from my like personal experience, there's not really been too many times I've had the technology on. I mean, I'm playing Doom as well at the moment, the latest Doom, the Doom Dark Ages. And because that's an FPS, I think I'm just more comfortable having it off. I mean, I've experimented with it on and off and on like a high resolution screen uh, with like a high refresh rate. As I say, like great, it can definitely be worth using. But for me, I just value the way the game feels and I want the latency to be as low as possible. And frame generation for me doesn't really fit in there. But as I say, it's one of like NVIDIA's technologies that's certainly worth exploring. But the fact that in pretty much all of their graphs now, other than games that don't support the tech, they actually show this and like with all the graphs and they say like 4X and look at the massive difference when even to like a non-PC gamer comparing the two, I think you would definitely uh, notice the difference in a, a lot of situations. But it depends on the game, depends on the settings. And as a general rule for frame generation, you probably need around about 70, 80 FPS as a base frame rate before you can start to use this technology or you're gonna find that the latency is gonna be like completely out of whack for you anyway. So that's what I mean. If you're getting 70 to 80 FPS anyway, do you really need that much more? I mean, we'd like it for multiplayer, but as it makes the latency worse, you're not getting that advantage. You're just getting some extra smoothness with potentially some artifacts that I don't think for most people is that useful. But those are the main differences anyway between DLSS and frame generation, and then DLSS, FSR, and XCSS. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer them. I'm sure loads of people will aim to help as well. If you wanna check out current pricing on some of the latest graphics cards and the ones we recommend, we will leave these linked down below or we'll also refer you to our graphics card buyer's guide that will help you to choose everything. Uh, but smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Get yourself subscribed and we'll catch you in the next one.